Welcome back to Blurscraft. This is my fourth building for my Road to Mordheim build, which is uh, going to be a 4x4 table for Mordheim. Uh, this building, this video is going at warp speed, just so you know. This was a big build. It took a while. I had to, once again, edit and condense the time lapse just so that it seems a reasonable t length since everyone's attention span, you know, is is about three minutes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I started with, in my favorite way, which is using a cardboard box for the base, kind of with a, a general idea and a concept sketch is usually how I start. Um, so then I started throwing it together. I put uh, flooring down in the bottom not knowing if it was actually going to be exposed, I decided that I wanted to just close off the com the bottom completely, so I threw a bunch of chaff in there and painted it dark because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get back in there after I put the floor on. Uh, I'm did when I do a building, I try to think about all of the framework and whether and and ma trying to match it all up with the building so I did all of the window frames a certain size popsicle stick and then did the actual I don't know that fancy stuff on the on the outside I don't know what the heck it's called but I did that with a wider popsicle stick and then used some balsa wood just for these little embellishments there and I tried to to make sure that I I stayed in the, that uh, order of doing them so that it had a consistency throughout the building. If you do that when you're building, it will make the build seem uh, a more solid build as a whole. Uh, the concept will be more apparent because things will stay in scale. If you start messing with the scale, then it... Uh, it can quickly get out of hand to where parts of it don't look how you'd like them to. I don't know, it, it has really helped me to kind of, uh, just like when you, you're painting minis, you choose your three colors or your four colors that, you, that you're going to use. It's the same kind of idea um, for the scale and uh, the resources that I'm using. This was a really fun building to do. Uh, I added a lot more detail in it than I thought I would. Just as I organically built it, the detail kind of came out, and then I really liked what it was, and I wanted to add that around the whole building. So I did with the balsa wood that sort of uh, little detail really pulled the whole building into a single terrain piece I don't know it, it really made it talk to me a little bit more so then I just kept adding to it after that and uh, the way that the box warps with the spackle that I use on there or the joint compound I feel like helps in telling that story as you're building it because it twists the cardboard which twists the walls which makes the whole shape of the building seem uh, more destroyed which is good in this case because I'm building a ruined city but if you're trying to do something more strict and more like a uh, historical maybe not damaged that a thriving city it might not be the best process unless you like that that look of kind of the odd shaped um, things. I have had a few comments of how it looks uh, Dr. Seuss-esque, which I really like, and since hearing this I have kind of leaned into it a little bit more and probably will even more after this. Um, this build showed me especially how much uh, hidden detail means to me. It's almost like building a diorama and it harkens back to kind of my uh, initial days of learning how to build terrain with 
uh, model trains and dioramas. Which brings me to the next thing that I build right here, which is this stairway. Which I really like the way it turned out, but when I started building it, I was like, why the hell am I doing this? This is a waste of time. It, it was a little bit frustrating. You know, I'm building most of this by hand. I'm not really using power tools or anything. Uh, so, I was cutting all of these and measuring them one by one. There's definitely easier ways to build stairs. But I remember doing this as a kid and it looking really good. And like I said, when I first started building it, I was not happy. But when I got to the end of it, I remember why I did it like this. Because the popsicles sticks are a super easy to find resource and that simple shape that is naturally made by the squares is I don't know it's just something that that uh, a lot of us see in our daily lives and it it like brings some realism and immersion into the the piece because obviously you're not gonna be able to stand a miniature on that the bases are usually what 25 millimeters or 28 millimeters which is like an inch and a half or something it's not going to stand on that little tiny stair like the it's going to fall right the heck down it's going to slide down into that pit of of that space there that actually started with the idea that you could play in but as I continue building on it, I decided that I didn't really want you to play in it. I just wanted it to be an area that you observe that brings you into the city of Mordheim. That, you know, somebody lived here before the meteor struck and destroyed the city. And I felt like once I started, once I added that door and I added those stairs, that it really became a place that had been lived in. How do you get from one floor to the other? That whole dynamic realism that you kind of take for granted when you play a lot of tabletop war games because it it's not really about the terrain so much. Like it, it the terrain is just something there that causes an effect um, or gives you cover. It doesn't it doesn't uh, speak in its own right or or a lot of times. And especially in, in rules terms, it, the, you could do basically the same thing a lot of times with just a cardboard cutout of whatever it is. Um, but when you have, you know, a ruined chapel or an, a mausoleum, it adds so much more flavor into the game. Playing a, a game with fully painted miniatures on a fully painted board is a wonderful experience, and I would suggest everybody try you know ha have that as a a goal on your uh, hobby bucket list of doing uh at least once because it will it will really uh, make an impact on you now i lost a little footage here on how i made the two side wall pieces for the whole attic area which i understand is a very large attic area and, um which actually brings me to a point of how uh, how tall is a floor in 28 millimeter? And uh, my consensus is whatever's the easiest to play on, because I think ease of play is really a, a very important thing. If you can't play on it, then it's just a diorama. So on that, with that in mind, I build everything a little bit bigger than it probably should be, just so that I can get my fat hands in there to move things around. Um, this build is kind of an exception because I built that whole floor down there uh, without the intention of people moving models down there. So that does kind of, uh, it is a little counterintuitive when you just look at it like that because it makes you want to put a model down there. But um, the two edges of this the, the attic area are made out of that same plastic uh, board that I was talking about before. It was a, I don't know, a school sign from a few years ago that I shoved in the corner and 
cut up for uh, attic walls. Um, the attic, all the rafters are made out of balsa wood, which is the first time I used that, and I probably will get more dowels because the balsa wood is great for detail but it is not very structural so the attic on this building isn't as strong as the roofs and uh, attics in the other buildings um, which is unfortunate but that's alright as long as you are aware um, it does add a I don't know a certain level of detail when you look in to the attic and can see the bottom of the, the shingles and all the rafters there. It's it reminds me of an attic, but um, I yeah I really like I said I really like the way this building came out. Um, I thought I was done, and then I kind of got a weird idea when I found this little LED light thing I I had. Um, so I cut an extra hole on the side just to put a, another window so I could stick this LED and light up the bottom area that you can't get to. So, um, yeah, you know, fun little details. Uh, whenever inspiration strikes, I would say definitely say go with it because that added detail in, that, in this build is actually one of my favorite parts about it. I probably will end up trying to get a couple more of those LED lights and just adding them around for atmospheric effect. Um, but yeah, thanks uh, for checking this out. This is a finished product here. It's definitely waiting paint. There's probably a little bit more sand and grime and gunk I'm going to put on there. But other than that, yeah, I had a great time. Um, I would love to do a, another shout out to Hive Scum in Rust Root Hust Discord. Uh, Under the Dice. All those guys are great. Um, yeah, thanks for watching my video. Thanks for checking my stuff out. If you would do the whole like and subscribe thing, that's cool. Uh, but if you want to throw me a comment, if you want to see any tutorials, anything in particular, just, just shout it out. And I'll catch you guys in my next video.